Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 358. We have a returning guest on that you, uh, we've probably had, I think it was, it was only probably about four months ago where we had David on, but we'll get to him in a minute. We're going to do what we do every week and kind of go around the virtual room and tell everyone what we got going on, where they can find us, anything we got to promote. Um, and then we'll kind of dive into our topic. So uh, I guess you're on my channel, so I'll start it off. Um, Scott Circle with Circworks Art Labs. You can find my stuff at circworks.com where I've got my, you can find my comic Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie adventure story. Uh, I've got issues one through five up there. Five is just recently I uh, uploaded that plus some different variant covers for uh, issue five and all kinds of stuff. So that's up there as well as my digital products that will help you in creating your own comics. And uh, also on this channel, uh, you can find my series, Making Comics 101, which is a soup to nuts course for free. Uh, pretty much the, the most comprehensive course you're going to find for free anywhere on how to make comics. And that's, that's all right here on this channel. So that's me. And then I'm going to move uh, clockwise over to my friend, Corey. Corey, what's going on over in your world? Same old stuff. Yeah, you can you can find my stuff at CoreyKerr.com. I've got uh, got hoodies and laptop sleeves in addition to the t-shirts and everything else now. So you can see a couple new uh, designs, one of which I haven't done a video for. So and you can cool. check all that out at CoreyKerr.com. So cool. I'll have a look to see if I'm not, not, not wearing one today. Sometimes I forget. Yeah. What Scott, Scott's my Scott's my best billboard, man. That guy. Well, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned hoodie. I might, I might have to get a hoodie. My yeah. pretty, work, one, my pretty, work one's getting a little ratty, so pretty svelte <laughs> too. You know what I mean? You can really promote it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a Greek god as a model. <laughs> Josh, what are you up to, man? Oh, um, I'm just working on comics. Comics like. Jacob's apartment, my uh, graphic novel that's a coming of age story about two polar opposite roommates, uh, one who's kind of questioning uh, the theology of his belief system, the other who's questioning her relationships. And uh, both of them are kind of in these life transitions and find each other and also proceed to find a doomed romance where dreams and reality interweave. Kind of like if you took Ghost World and Eternal Sunshine for the Spotless Mind, put that in a blender. If you like that flavor, you'd like this book, Jacob's Apartment, you should order it. Um, and if you've already ordered it or if you haven't, maybe you don't have the money to do it, uh, ask your local library to pick it up. So there's that. And then Two Stories, which is my graphic novel about faith and mental illness. Super autobiographical, very like traditional indie underground comic hand lettered hand inked and uh handed to you in print on websites everywhere so yeah that's my, those are my wares yeah and 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 a couple things to note about those two books and also uh the one that you're working on um uh, one is in black and white ones in color and both and the new ones in color and they're both different kind of styles that's where we're going to be getting into in the topic once we start talking to david but first awesome David, uh, well, you got something coming up that you want to promote. So you want to mention what that is and anything else you want to mention about yourself before we kind of dive into the topic? Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm David. Uh, I am uh, currently about to launch a book called Narita. It's about a mermaid. I think it's bigger than that, right? Yeah, slightly bigger. No, it's it's postcard size. It's it's just gonna be like a tiny. Little, it's a mini comic. Yeah. Either that, or you got really big. <laughs> I got huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's big in Texas. What can I say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's a that's that's a comic that I've got coming out. It's in the works. It's it's all done. It's the first book that I've ever done that was colored. So I'm really excited about how that's gonna turn out. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm just here bandit writing your your show to talk about color because I went on to Cirque Works uh, YouTube channel and did a little research on different ways to color comic books and it's kind of actually the inspiration behind why I decided to color my really? book that's coming out now. Yeah, so I was like, I could do that. 
that makes sense. The way he described it makes sense. Yes. So okay, well, that. that now I'm really interested because I mean I'm looking at I'm looking at the the color work on Narita and it's like it's. It's nothing that I think I've demonstrated how to do, so I'm I'm curious. So we'll definitely get into that. I I, I was just going to quickly hold up your your other book. Uh, yes. Oh, and also there is a link. So so I don't know if you mentioned that there's going to that you've got a Kickstarter coming up. Did you mention that for? No, I I, I, so, I sort of said yeah. Next actually on uh, Tuesday the the 14th on Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day is when yeah. we launch and it goes for 20 days. So yeah, and there's yeah. a link in the description right now. Uh, if you and I can guarantee, I can tell you just based on Eureka here, um, and and I'm looking at the preview for the for Narita that you definitely want to want to get on on this because it's just the artwork and the story and everything's just great. So, um, uh, so anyway, there is a link in the description. If you go there, you can uh, you can just I don't know if you click you click a button or something like that, and it will alert you when the Kickstarter goes live. So it's like a pre. You know, it's it's just basically to alert you when it goes live. So definitely check that out, because um, typically we like to get people on here when their Kickstarters, if they have a Kickstarter when it's already live. But um, but the good thing is some people will be watching this later, and it may be live by the time you're watching this. So yeah. we'll find out. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> so so I guess I guess I should just well like like I was kind of talking about about Josh's books. Um, I think most of us, it seems like most of us kind of work in black and white. And just by the way you're just des you're describing this, David, is that you're you're probably a little more comfortable working in black and white. And then or no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if yeah. I'm 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 on your team. Like you know, Akira is my jam, Nashka the Valley of the Wind is my jam. I'm like you keep it simple, take away all of the, the extra stuff that could go wrong, right? Because Murphy's Law, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. The mm -hmm. color, to me, was like the extra guitar pedal on the board that doesn't really need to be there. You know what I mean? You're like, do I need this wah-wah pedal? I mean, the guitar sounds pretty good, and it might break. So that's kind of <laughs> – that's how I was thinking of it. But now it's 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 uh, it's making more sense to me. So Yeah, because I think all four of us have done black and white comics, and we've also done color comics. And it, I – Josh's two the you know um, Jacob's apartment and and his his new book that he's working on now seem to have a very different color style, so it just I, I think that's a really kind of interesting topic to talk about you know different color styles and 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 I guess I guess the first thing I want to talk to you about David is like how you settled on this this style because it looks and I'm I'm also curious how you achieved it because it looks very much traditional watercolor and I don't know if it's traditional digital but it but it, it looks traditional watercolor and, and if it's and if you were kind of inspired by something that i mentioned on my channel i'm curious what that was what i, what I said that that because i mean the stuff looks great but it's it's like it's not like really anything i've done so uh you there was a section in there when you were talking about different ways to achieve um shadows and tone and there was okay. an artist that you mentioned who uh basically Put in all the, the the shadow areas and did them in, in kind of a purple a neutral purple mm, yeah yeah right so i had already done the entire thing with uh washes for my 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 you know tones mm -hmm. and so i took all those things i found a neutral purple that i really liked yeah i found another kind of uh in the same color scheme came same cool color realm for the background color to make the whole thing. So so I was uh, trying to do that, uh, like Batman, the animated series thing, where you start from a dark color and you yeah. kind of draw on top of that. So it gives it more of a darkness to it. It's never like you're covering up white. Instead, I was covering up the night sky, essentially, with the characters and all that kind of stuff. And then I would color underneath that, and it gives it that wash texture. You know what I mean? So yeah. I also yeah, added, I think... I added a paper texture to it when I was done with it, too. Yeah, but it but it, so it is it is digital then or is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. Because it it looks. I mean, it, obviously, it, it you can do amazing stuff digitally, so you can make it look like watercolor. But it definitely looks like watercolor. But I de now that you mentioned that, I see that. I think the artist that I was referring to when I talked about how they did all their tones and everything in purple, I think that was Sean Galloway, or he goes by Cheeks too. Um, and yes. he kind of in some of his books, he kind of shows the process, and his stuff's very different from yours. This is more of an animation style. But, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but I don't, that's, it's, it just, 
to me, it looks a lot better because it's just gray. Sometimes it can tend to get muddy and everything. And, mm -hmm. and purple is a nice, it's kind of a, that night, it's a cool color, but it's also, you know, because it has red in it, it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds, in my opinion, to kind of use that as, as your tones, which, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely pulled it off. I mean, it looks great, but I see, I do see a big, a kind of a, just going through it, it there's a big purple kind of motif that there's one color that kind of sticks out more than anything. And definitely it also, the, the green of the, the main, the lead character's hair. I mean, it just mm -hmm. looks really good against that purple as well. So. Yeah. I was trying to find colors that were going to, that were going to complement each other, but, you know, also trying to do something that was, um, cause the, the, the book is all set at night. Right. So I was thumbing through some, uh, uh Elizabeth, uh, Breitweiser's stuff and the way she depicts moonlight, at night there's still like these really harsh shadows you know what i mean yeah. so all the highlights they're not actually white they're this this crazy blue um that's a really 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 pale blue um, that's supposed to be like the moonlight and so i was having tons of fun with that um and, and once i started getting into it with the color i was like wow this is this is crazy i can I, the, the world is my oyster it, it just added so much depth to it i was really started to get really excited about it you know so so was the original was the original plan to do it in black and white and then you decided to do it in color yeah 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 i kind of said it on a whim to uh mark from lkc yeah. i was like i'm thinking about maybe coloring the book he's like you should i'm sure you could and i'm like all right and that was it and i was like okay yeah. I'll, I'll try why not and then i you know just kind of slapped some color on it and handed it to him and he's like i didn't think okay sure yeah i guess you <laughs> Dang, I didn't think you were gonna actually do that, but okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it looked it looks great. So I don't know if you guys you guys want to chime in at all as far as like I don't know. I'm curious with Josh, uh, like, because you're you've got like you've got the black and white book, and then you've got and you've you know you've got the you know Jacob's apartment, which is more of a kind of more of solid colors. This new one's a little bit different it's more like i don't know how would you describe it it's it's like so jacob's apartment is mostly flat color my favorite mm -hmm. kind of coloring is flat color in general uh but it's got like one rendering tone so it's kind of like uh like you know one flat tone of light and then usually a flat tone of shadow um and for this uh this book's weird because all the rendering is done in like pencil mm -hmm. almost like black prisma color on the top layers and then it's just strictly flat color so there's no like lighting or anything like that signified by anything other than the line that's it's kind of overlaid over it I, if, if i if you were to without me looking at it if you were to ask me if it was flat colored i'd say no but that's just because of the i think that's just because the line art and the you know yeah the, yeah, it's really weird, and it's like if you see the the pages, you know, this is one of my favorite things about like coloring comics is like when you see the pages and then you see what's underneath them, it's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can pull one up. So like this is kind of one of the final pages, like what they look like, right? Mm -hmm. But then it, it's like if you take away the color, yeah, it does not look flat, but it's like. The black and white is doing all the work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's doing the he heavy lifting. Yeah. So if I get rid of the black and white, it's like just strictly flat color, which is kind of oh, yeah. weird. Yeah. Like you wouldn't, you know, think that because it's got all this, all the shading. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, whereas like if, well, I'll pull, a, I'll look for a Jacob's apartment one while we, while we keep talking because i don't want to make you guys wait for that yeah but jacob's apartment it's it's all ink drawing so it's like solid solid lines and everything too yeah yeah and so that's like um let me see if i can find a good example so like here's a spread from there this is also a lot older so my files were a lot less clean so we'll we'll have to see well, it's taking forever because it's... Oh, there we go. Okay. Can you guys see that? No. Oh, now yep. I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is like a double page spread at the beginning of Jacob's apartment. And it's like, this is more traditionally... Traditional 
comic color and inks. So if I pull away, like that's what the kind of lines look like. Right. Mm -hmm. And then basically if you look at the color without the lines, that's what I mean by there's like, you, you can see there's like a shade of flat light and shades of flat shadow. Yeah. Yeah. That are kind of underneath. So. And that, that, that to me is awesome. Cause like, uh, you know, I come from a printmaking background. So mm -hmm. when you plot out what colors are going to go where and not even worrying about layering them. Like if you're doing the screen print with opaque colors, they would just layer on top of each other and completely block them out. So totally. It's it's cool. And then you you can add, you know, your your final matrix screen on there. You know, it could be the fifth screen or the sixteenth screen or whatever. And then it mm -hmm. does so much to it so that all the stuff that's underneath interacts with what's going on top. And you can have as much detail or as little detail as you want, just like the panels you have up right now. It's really, yeah, really interesting. That's funny because like uh, that's a huge influence on me because I did so much like T-shirt art for yeah. for so many years that like um, I and it's funny because like learning how to color comics informed my T-shirt making and T-shirt art helped me pare down to like basic colors, repetitive colors and like yeah. color separations and stuff. But I I still get a kick out of seeing the different layers of like a screen print where you're like, mm -hmm. you know, especially when it's something that looks like this whole gamut of colors and you look at it and the screens are just four passes and you're like, how did yeah. they do that? Like it's, I love that. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Total, total magic. Yeah. Oh, really wanna... speaking, of, speaking of screen printing, I got this crazy ass shirt from my drummer. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, so, oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, well, it's his his uh his boss started a, a sub company at his screen printing shop called 420 for Life, thinking that it was going to sell to all the potheads in Austin like crazy, <laughs> and it totally went belly up. So they were left with all these t-shirts, oh, <laughs> and so he's like offloading them to me. And I don't really smoke weed, but my daughter thinks they look really cool. She's like, "Can I wear that to school?" I'm like, "Yeah, no. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no." <laughs> This is strictly pajama shirts, but yeah, yeah. I just wear it because it's a cool screen print. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that is a cool screen print. That's hilarious too. So they ended up stuck with for twenty for life for life for life. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to. I definitely want to get uh, Corey's input, but first, I just wanted to pull up. The, Gary Hodges had a comment saying he got Eureka and he said he loved it. So awesome! So, I'm glad. Glad to hear it. And Corey so, thinks he might. He thought he might have missed his, but he said he might get a digital. But you definitely want to read that. Go. Look yeah, I've got to go. I've got to go back and look. I I know I backed it. Uh, yeah. I, I I might have missed it in the. I don't know. And mail is super slow when I where I am. So I, I well, add several days I was in, in a week to everything. <laughs> I was in charge of the digital fulfillment. So uh, if it didn't come through that way, that's on me. And Mark was the one who's doing all the physical for that campaign. So if if you if you did physically back it and he didn't send you one, any excuse to call that guy and make him feel bad because he's a very <laughs> fragile, fragile person. Yeah. Oh, any excuse, I just... Yeah. I love we'll making him cry. Which level I backed out. We've had so a, we yeah, can. we've had Mark on the show. <laughs> so we could get him. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, well, so I, I, I kind of came uh, at everything a little bit a little bit backwards. I don't know. Like I started digitally and then I went uh, and then I went traditional. I, normally people go the other way. Uh, and I jumped right into colors and uh, skipped inks. Uh, on my first comic, I was doing darkened pencils with um let's see that was back in like i don't know 2012 ish or something and it was uh i was doing uh jason brubaker um had kind of a style of like doing uh darkened pencils and then flat colors overlaid with um like traditional watercolor so i i watercolored like a bunch of just sheets of watercolor paper and then scanned them all in so i had my own library of uh, of like watercolor textures. And then I'd layer those in uh, with like blending and Photoshop. Then later, uh, then later I went to uh, traditional inks and then, uh, and then I jumped back. And so I don't know if I have any of that original stuff, but I've got um, like, this is more of kind of a, an amalgamation. I stole some of this 
from uh, Cam Kendall. And so like if you see like like this one, for example, um, those are all flat colors. And then I'll go in and I'll do um, one blended layer for shadows. And that'll be like a multiply with low opacity. Uh, sometimes I'll do blacks or sometimes I'll do like a purple or, uh, and I try to do my warm colors on the shadows and my cool colors on the highlights or vice versa, but I try to separate warms and cools. Um, and then I'll go in over the top of that with another layer where I'll go in and do, um, I'll go in and do like a radial gradient, um, like low opacity radial gradient, and I'll just burst in uh, little bits of color. And so I did that for, I did that for a long time. And so you can see like little bits of kind of radial gradient uh, to kind of color that in, but it's all pretty flat color um, that way. Like this is a, a good example of that. And then uh, more recently I've, I've gone like totally back to black and white and that's been really fun <laughs> just to get back. I don't know, like I like color and color is fun, but I really enjoy having to try to coax out some of the values in, oh shoot, that's not my, um, but try to coax out some of the values uh, just with black. And like, it's been an interesting experience. Gosh, dang it. Anyway, I'm trying to show, <laughs> I'm trying to show my black and white stuff and it keeps jumping to my store. Uh, I've got to fix that on my site, but anyway. Uh, it's just like, trying to tell people to pick up a mug with Corey Cruz art. That's all it's trying. Yeah. To do. If you really want to see what I'm talking about, apparently you have to, you have to buy something. It's, it's paywalled, but, uh, but anyway, <laughs> So, so now I don't know. I kind of, I kind of went out a little bit different, but I, I think my, I think my exploration with color has informed my inks. And so it's, it's, I've gone kind of back and forth over the last 10 years of figuring this out of like starting in pencils with color and then going to traditional inks uh, and then jumping back into digital color uh, and then jumping into jumping in kind of a mixture of that. And so it kind of depends on what I'm looking at, but I really like digital watercolor on fresco on the iPad now. Um, and then other than that, if I'm doing color, it'll be pretty flat, basically like three tones. So I'll, I'll do like flats and then I'll do a highlight adjustment layer and a, and a shadow adjustment layer. And then maybe I'll go in and do that radial stuff, but I haven't done the radial gradient in a few years. Um, but it, it's nice for kind of little bits of pops of color, just everything low opacity and blended. So it's all, a little bit subtle. Sometimes it goes a little nuts and it's kind of a little overwhelming. Um, but in the last few months, I've been doing mostly, mostly the black and white stuff. And that's been really fun as a challenge to try to coax out the, you know, all the levels of value, but you're only using actually one value. So any value changes that you see are, are perceived, but not actual. That's been kind of entertaining because I'm trying not to use gradients or anything now. So I don't know. It's all, it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know for me, it kind, of, it kind of depends on the project, but yeah. Um, like, like, well, I guess I can pull up some of my stuff. Let's see. Uh, present screen share. Let's see. Well, hold on a second. All right. Here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, like my prints and everything, those are, you know, usually like a more, I work a lot in illustrator. Actually, I, I do the line art in illustrator and then I bring it into Photoshop and I do the coloring, but I try to make it look like it's a vector color, even though I do it in Photoshop, but it's all very much, you know, I've got my, I got my highlight. I usually start with a mid color and then I've got my highlight, which is a little darker version of that color. And then the, or the, the shadow is a little darker version and then a lighter version. And then, um, so, but, but I do that for, for like my prints and everything. Let me see if there's another example here. Um, yeah, here's one. So I like, I kind of like that kind of solid, solid color with the highlights and the shadows, but then for my comic stuff, if I do c color the comics, um, there's one, let me see if I have one here. Um, where's that? Uh, huh. Looking for it. I can't. 
I was looking for that anthology cover I did. Oh, here, yeah. So this is, you know, that's more your typical line art where it's, you know, it's got shadows and I mean, it's, it's more blended tones and everything like that. So, um, so, I, you know, it just, but mostly, most of the artwork I do is like for, uh, how do I get out of here? Stop. Okay. There. Uh, yeah. Most of the, most of the comic artwork I do is mostly, you know, black and white. And then like for young and the dead, uh, I did, I do like grayscale just some tones and then, you know, for some, like in that anthology, I just went straight black and white line art, but it really depends. But then I also, you know, I also do a lot of marker stuff. So when I do sketches, I'll do a lot of Copic stuff, which, you know, I would love to get back to doing like traditional watercolor, but so far Copics is like, the, that's like the closest I've got because <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah. it's just kind of, sometimes it's hard to break up the watercolors and, and, you know, do all that, but. <laughs> I've got Makes a nice mess. set. I've got a nice set, but it's just, it's just like I, I just haven't haven't broke out broke them out yet. So, man, with 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 color or painting directly on anything, since I'm a, I'm a printmaker, I, I have this phobia of touching artwork because I'm afraid I'm going to break it. I have to like smush something <laughs> onto a thing, or there's got to be a hole, and I spray through the hole. It's got to be a you know what I mean, something to block me from the. So what I started doing was uh, doing mono prints with an open screen. And mm -hmm. you get it up on your press and you get your paper and everything. And then you can use, uh, 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 like a, if you have a gum Arabic based watercolor, you can put it on there. You can even draw with like Crayola markers or whatever. And then you take a transparent base that's an ink with no pigment in it and you do a wash over it. And then you, when you print it onto the paper, it pushes all your watercolors onto the paper and it, you can, so you can adjust things. You can paint directly onto the screen. You can erase the watercolor that you did wrong or, Put big blobs of water on there so to make it like flood everywhere it's it's really fun really cool wow. but, yeah that's so, cool yeah yeah i like this that that'd be a that'd be cool cool demo to do just to kind of check that out yeah that sounds really i cool. wish i wish there was a way i could set that up at like a, a comic con like do a yeah. live screen printing thing be like check it out kids you can draw that'd whatever you want on the screen and i'll print it you know if i had like a tiny little tiny little screen printing setup you know what i mean i bet i could pull it off somehow yeah, I love done, that. I was gonna say Corey and I went to um, Creative South. I guess we're we're gonna go back this year, but it's this uh, this um, it's kind of a networking, creative networking event in uh, in Columbus, Georgia, and you know everyone gets a shirt and they screen print them on the sh on the spot. So they've got they've yeah. got it, they're all set up. So they just screen print it right there, and then they hand you your shirt and you let it dry, and then. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, my friend and I, I just built a studio in his backyard, um, and we're going to start a small little screen printing shop just for doing basically like comic book merch. Um, I'm doing a tiny, tiny little con in San Antonio that's like uh, part of their public library system kind of mm -hmm. thing, and it's free. There's no tickets or anything. And so I asked the guy, I said, hey, I'll trade you a booth space if, if uh, I set up a, a screen printing scenario with your – you know, your Comic Con's commemorative image or whatever. So he'll have a screen and then I'll, I'll have a screen for LKC and then a screen for Yuriko and be like, hey, I'll print your shirt. You just kind of take your shirt off and I'll print it for you real quick. You know what I mean? It's fun. It's it's real interactive for fans and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. So you're that's actually awesome. printing you're actually printing them on the shirts that people are already wearing. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some, of some kind of design. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> flip it inside out. We'll print on the yeah. other side. Yeah. i I'm, I'm gonna have some of my own shirts, but it is yeah. it is fun to challenge people and say, Hey, well man, if you're willing to get naked, I'll print your shirt for you. Yeah, that's know? cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh there, uh, is, there is something to that though, for just the just it, it's just a cool thing that yeah. added thing like i'm doing it right here on the spot so yeah i thought i'd show this just yeah from like just if you're a fan cool. of like screen printing so one of my favorite things when it back when i did t-shirts was like doing kind of traditional comic separations oh cool. and so like all of this is like these flat colors where i do my own separations and stuff and so it's like one pass two passes that's where like you know the yellows added half tone dots for like the skin tone and then third pass is where we add like the blue 
and then fourth pass. So it's like, that's another fun way to work. I love doing screen printing. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's awesome. Thought I'd I, I brought up, I'll, I'll show this. I brought up an example of what I was talking about. I switched computers since I used to do the older stuff, but <clears throat> so this would be, this would be an example of like a finished one. Is that uh, the fresco that you were talking about? Adobe fresco? Yeah. So or? this is, this is a, a little bit cleaned up in Photoshop, but mostly in fresco on the iPad. Um, but if you look at just the inks, let me get rid of those layers. So that'll be, that will be just the inks. And then I'll come in and I'll do flat colors. So I'll do like one. And then each of these is, is like a, like a pixel lock on top of that. And so I'll go in and do all the flats. Um, and then sometimes I'll knock that back with like hue saturation adjustment instead of going in and doing everything and then like shadows and highlights. So that's just one layer where I just painted black or white. And then I would add in, you can't really see it on the, on the screen, but let me make myself bigger here. Oh, where's it? There we go. So you'll kind of add that in. And so you can kind of see just like without that, it's all just flats. But then this is just like 30%, 37% opacity and overlay. Um, and so everything kind of mixes down. So even though these are like blues and greens and purples and stuff, it's all just a black and white layer. Uh, and then I'll add in like some watercolor darks and some watercolor brights and then like color splashes. And so the color splash is another overlay multiply on the shadows and then uh, overlay your screen on the highlights. And so that's a, that's a, that's a fun way to work because I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't mix color super well. Um, and so I'll make a lot of decisions like on the fly after the fact. And it's nice to, cause I don't have like a background in painting. And so it's nice to be able to like, I could just go in, like I could do that now. I could just go in and just say, Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to change the color of, of his skin and I can go in and just change it and all of the values, all the colors and all the highlights and shadows and midtone values and all that just change just based on that one color. Cause they're all blended down. Hmm. And so that's always, that's always been kind of fun. That's, that's think. something that, that uh, I was talking with somebody about recently was the, the concept of like, if you're um, if you're in charge of doing the penciling, the inking and the coloring, uh, then you can you're kind of ahead of the game, right? I mean, you know, all yeah. the cheat codes. So like, right. as I'm inking, as I'm inking a, a figure that's in the middle ground and I've got a background and I've got a foreground, I'll put them all on separate layers knowing that, Hey, I can go in, I can just select that layer to fill it in with that color or to fill it in with those tones or, or whatever it is. Whereas if someone sent me a final product and they said, Hey, I want you to color this. I'd have to go through and I'd have to block everything out and I'd have to flat it. And I'd have yeah. To, like, right. You have to chisel it all out. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's cool to be in charge of the driving the bus and you own the school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eddie, Eddie is asking in the, Eddie's asking in the chats, uh, flats. I'm, a, I'm assuming she's asking what those are. And so just, just, so you know what those are, let me turn everything off. Um, and the flats are, just like this so this is just without any of the inks and so i'll just kind of toggle oh sorry it's like i do this for a living i should really know what's on the screen but um <laughs> so these are flats those would be those would be considered flat colors and what what this what this allows you to do is do selections or go in and do adjustment layers on on top of what's happening um and and it's it's a layer that's a layer or multiple layers that's underneath the inks. And so these, these would be just, just the inks. And then if you add in flats, then it's just big flat sections of color without any uh, gradation or tone or anything in that. It's just big giant. And then on top of that, then you can add in like the different types of shading and stuff. So that's, that's what we're talking about with like blocking and flatting and things. And, and, and sometimes flatting, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the corresponding color that it's going to end up being. It may just be right. a selection tool. Like I do that all the time. If I'm just doing black and white for the Yuriko book, I did it all over the place. I would fill something in in hot pink so that I could find it. I could select it and I could be like, all right, that's going to have this texture on it or this thumbprint or whatever mm -hmm. just yeah. for that section. So it's, it's a real handy tool to be able to separate stuff out. 
and, yeah. and add like definition between character, background, foreground, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I yeah. remember uh, way back in the days when we were first doing computer colorization, when we were working on you know, old computers that just didn't have that kind of power. We do all our flats and black and white, but we just make sure that the, you know, that that there's a slight variation there. Um, just just so you can go back in and select that area to drop the color in. So you wouldn't have like, you know, for like whatever skin tone, it wouldn't be a skin tone. It would just all be different grays. And as long as they, as long as that, that different value of that gray wasn't touching one of the same value, you could just go in and select that and then, then color it in on a different layer and everything. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't like, like David said, it doesn't have, have to actually be the, that, that, that color, but, but so I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, so are you, are you working on Photoshop then? Who me? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually working in Clip Studio. Cause I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm on, a, I'm on an iPad with a pen, Apple Pencil. Okay, cool. So you got the mobile Clip Studio. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't dove into that. Now I do. So if, I do most of my illustrating nowadays in Clip Studio, my inking and everything. But I haven't. But I still bring it into Photoshop to color, just because I'm, I'm used to that. So, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think maybe one of these days I gotta just practice you know doing my coloring in clip studio because i mean just looking at what you're doing i mean obviously it works <laughs> yeah obviously yeah there, there's a there's a there's a correspondence between those two programs i mean i i learned on photoshop when i was in college and stuff and being able to translate that into working with clip studio was the easiest thing i tried to work in procreate for a little while and it was like oh, this is this is not what i i needed to i need to have be able to dial in the, the exact amounts of opacity and all these kind of things. I want to be able to type it in. I use shortcuts on a keyboard. You know, I'm I'm an old man. Yeah, I think how it's funny works. because <laughs> because I think you, Corey, and myself, we've all experimented with Procreate and and decided we didn't like it. Well, while everyone else in the world loves it, you know. I know. So yeah, it's yeah. like I don't know what it is because we were because like if I was going to draw on the iPad, I think Corey Corey may have changed since he's testing out some of the adobe stuff but um we we kind of like drawing an autodesk sketchbook more than um more than uh, procreate yeah the the ink the inking engine in autodesk sketchbook is um yeah. <laughs> far superior yeah. it's amazing yeah, and it's, it's very similar to clip studio when i got to yeah. Clip studio i was like yeah i like yeah. this this you know this is awesome uh one thing in clip studio that i really liked about color uh at this juncture is there's a color mixing option in the you know windows and you can drop them down or whatever and it, it's color mixing and it, it brings up this little palette and it keeps your color palette uh right there and you can blend right there and then go in with an eye drop eyedropper and it automatically switches to being an eyedropper to select the colors oh, there so when you go back and start drawing you don't have to change between tools to select the color and this that and the other and then when you, if you close your color mixing paddle palette and you completely close off Close down the app and everything. Next time you log back in, it's right there. It's still there. It saves it for you. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't make cool. sense for me to keep switching back and forth because it's funny. Because I mean, I'm using like three different, you know, programs to do my comics. Because I'll I'll do the lettering in in Illustrator. I'll do the coloring in Photoshop. I'll draw it. I'll draw it and and ink it. And well, the cop my comic. I'm I'm drawing it in Clip Studio and then I print those out and hand ink them just because when I started I was hand inking and I just want to keep that. I want to keep, yeah. keep it looking like that same thing. But you know, once I finish this book, I'll probably just do everything, everything digitally, you know, in clip. Cause I just love, I love the, you know, that G pen and clip studio is just, Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. the, the only, the only thing that I, I really wish that they would improve is the, the detail ability to adjust like the kerning and stuff on fonts. So yeah, that's why I do Illustrator for. Yeah, I, I haven't even attempted to do any. You know, <laughs> any of in Clip Studio, know. it is what it is, and you don't yeah. get to change the spacing of the letters and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh. ah. Yeah. Yeah. I do want yeah. to tell people out there if you're doing hardcore typography, Illustrator is the only way. I'm just throwing it yeah. out there. It's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's good to hear. That's that's one of my main sources of income is teaching that class specifically. So 
<laughs> and Illustrator taught by Corey Kerr. That's the only yeah, way to do. Yeah, right. Somehow that's way better. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm curious. Do you guys have, because uh, I'm coming at, I, I always feel like I'm coming at, at art like sideways, sideways and late, but how much do you guys think about color theory and how much of it is uh, kind of planned ahead of time or how much of it is kind of on the fly. Cause sometimes I'll go in and I will, you know, I'll go to color.adobe.com or color lovers or something. And I will intentionally choose, you know, like a big split complementary or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, analogous like color palette. And then I'll build from there. And then other times I just kind of like mix on the fly until it looks good. So I'm kind of curious. Yeah. You know, well, I can start off streams like, where, where you guys are all on, on like the prints that I showed you those, yeah. those I do look, I'll do look at, I'll look at uh, different color combinations and things. Cause I, I usually those have some one of a limited color palette and I just want something design wise. Cause those posters are very designy and I want to mm -hmm. keep the, keep the color schemes to a minimum. So I will look at, and I'll also look at other pieces that I've done. And I like, have I used this, this color scheme before? I don't want to reuse it. I want to use something else. So I give a lot of thought to that when I'm doing my, my, you know, my, my prints and my, you know, the more, you know, uh, graphic design -y stuff uh, for comics. I, I don't know that I'm like, I'm, I don't know that I'm a master of, I'm definitely, well, I, I know I'm not a master of color theory. So I kind of struggle with like, like, like you said, Corey, I'm not a painter. I mean, uh, yeah. that's not my strong point. That's and so whenever I have to paint, I I mean I've got to look at all kinds of reference and and like okay, how did this person do that? Is that does this look right? And and um, so I, I struggle a little bit with like that. I mean I can pull it off, especially if there's if there's line art involved, I can pull it off. But if like like it like there were times where I would do I try to do like a fantasy type thing, and it you know, without any line art and it just, it doesn't look good. I just, I can't get the values to look right. And it just, you know, it just, it just kind of muddy. And so, um, so yeah, it's gotta be, I gotta have to work with line art and stuff for that. So I don't know. What about you guys? I use tons of, uh, like, especially if I'm doing graphic design work, um, one of my favorite things to do is look at like vintage, uh, like orange crate labels or, yeah like vintage uh japanese matchbooks or like different like old school like production stuff where color was minimal uh just to get like color inspiration sometimes i'll just like straight up steal the color you know where i'll, I'll yeah. take like a old school picture where i really like these two colors or something and i'll just eye drop them and hey i've got those colors now um uh, so I love doing that, especially for design work where it's like, you know, pull from a lot of stuff that existed before. Um, and then when I'm coloring, one of my favorite tricks is you flat. And when you're toning, uh, you just kind of go toward the complement. So like one really neat trick is the hue saturation tool, which is like, so you make your, um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll make a layer real quick. So it's like, you almost like, uh, I'm going to just grab a color and I'm a nerd. I, I like, I would never just grab the color from the color picker. I'd be like CMYK leveling it because <laughs> right. I like to have my CMYK, uh, differ by fives. <clears throat> That's just a nerdy thing. But, um, so you have your flat color, right? And then you have like your, uh, you know, color that's lighter. So you make your selection for that and then you can just hit um, hue saturation, right? And then like, if you, then you can just do your lightened area with that, that, uh, okay. And up the saturation and then you can slide your hue. So it like, it helps for like lightened and darkened areas. Um, and it especially works well. Like, let's say I wanted to make that round area like a shadow. I can just darken it a little bit and then I can up the saturation and just kind of push it a little bit toward the complement. Um, but does the saturate, is that using whites and blacks to do that? Or is it? What do you mean? Oh, uh, I don't, is it, I mean, it's not just like you're putting a, like a, like a, um, uh, 
what do you call it? Like a multiply layer of on it, like a black or like a. No, you're mixing HSB, right, Josh? Okay. No, no, no. Like it, you can literally just make the selection from the flats and and just use um, hue saturation to lower the like. You have your flats that are just your basic flats. You have your other layer that's your selections for light. And you just use that as a live uh, selection and can use hue saturation to just up the lightness and the saturation or shift around color. It's just a real yeah, quick so way that's... to, to um, it's a really quick way to color. My, my buddy who was on the show, Rick Reese, he used to do stuff for Bongo and that's how they do it. So. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's that's very similar to what I discovered with that little palette tool that's in Clip Studio. Is you grab a color and then you I would do like offshoots from that color to be able to right. eye drop out of. But you're essentially you put the split complement right next to it. You blend in between them, and yep. then you've got all of that to to grab from that whole to, gamut. That's a really yeah. smart move. Yeah, that's um, I was at Adobe Max with Kyle Webster. Uh, and he was doing a demo and that's how he mixes colors. So he'll choose, <clears throat> he'll choose colors and then he'll use some of his mixing brushes to go in and, and create like tonal values based on those colors. And so everything kind of pulls from the same and feels like it feels like it belongs. But Josh, you, you mentioned something. I wanted to show this cause I forgot that I had done this, but, um, I'll use this a lot. The library, the libraries in, uh, uh in the different, uh, Adobe programs. So there's an app where you can go in and you can um, on your phone where you can take a picture of something and then it will also, I'll, I'll see if I can pull it up. I think I've, I think I've got a way I can pull my phone up in a minute, but you, you can take a picture of something and then it'll, it'll get, uh, it'll grab the um, like five, five main colors from that picture. And then it'll give you a uh, kind of a swatch palette of that of that thing and then you can go in and make some minor adjustments based on that and so josh as you're talking i spent like a whole afternoon one time going through my grandpa's um he had an old box of like uh in in like the 50s and 60s those like illustrated you know mechanical illustrated this and you know popular mechanics that and all, all back when illustration was really strong and editorial and i just photographed all of the colors with that app and so here's a here's a bunch of like those kind of palettes mm -hmm. uh, and they they work really well together. And some of them are more or less saturated based on like how faded they were in the sun. So you can go like mm -hmm. more or less vintage. But then I also went through um, I got to do more of this, but I'll go through and like I'll grab like um, what I intended to do, which I obviously haven't was like every couple months go into comic book store and snap any trends that I see and like capture color pots that way. So I was doing that. And then um, you can also, also like any products that I saw were like the designs of the label or the packaging really jumped out at me and I captured those. So it's really interesting because um, anything where I'm like, Oh, I like that. Uh, I tried to pay attention to like the mood or the vibe that the, that the entire design is giving off. And then you can kind of lift the colors from that and you're going to get, you know, a sad or exciting or moody or kind of, you know, thoughtful or whatever kind of vibe based on those colors because they're kind of mixing that way. Anyway, I found that to be like a really interesting kind of tool to kind of, what to is, kind of jump. To. What is this app? What is this app? I must, I must have this app. Oh yeah. yeah it's amazing. Really I, it's called Adobe capture. Um, and give me just a second and I will, yeah, of course. Let's, so let's talk I, for a couple minutes. I see a, I see a huge missed opportunity to create a digital product from some of this. Cause it, you're talking about how you spend an afternoon getting these colors. I mean, yeah. that's people would, people will pay not to have to spend an afternoon and just get those color schemes. Like if you could wrap it into some kind of packaging, that's what I'm thinking of looking at yeah. that. So yeah, seriously. Well, yeah. Do you know, um, can you can you package can you package color swatches in like you can brushes? I would Why assume not? you can. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. you can if save you can them load them into Photoshop. Yeah, you can yeah. make uh make swatches. Um, the way you do it is you drag them into your swatch uh, library. Yeah. At least in Adobe, and then you save that file, and then you can ex like you can import that um into your swatch application. 
like your swatch settings that are in your you library. Can, so if I if I saved it as a PSD, then you could go in and you could import that PSD into your swatches. Uh, I don't know if it works with Photoshop. I know it works with Illustrator, but okay. I I don't see why it wouldn't work with um, Photoshop too. You can just make live swatches. Yeah. For sure, swatch well, coming, coming soon to a theater near you. We use uh, that all you... the time at work because you know it's like we do like lapel pins and stuff. So we'll make like swatches for glitter and stuff like that. You know, like special right. processes. But yeah, if you do that, Corey, what I would do is I I take some pictures of some of the resource material and and talk about what you're doing because that mm -hmm. like oh I've got all this vintage stuff and I took the time yeah. and hell yeah, and I've seen a lot of people will do that like for textured papers and stuff like that. Oh, I. I, 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 put, I bought a whole like old thing of old comics and I, I took all this, the, the, you know, I took all this texture directly from that and, you yeah. know, to, and build a story around that. And that's, but yeah. So, yeah that's so, awesome. Yeah. Well, okay. You, you might've just, uh, you might've just picked what I'm doing for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, you guys, you guys talk for a minute. I'm okay. going to, I'm going to so, set something up so I can demo that. So I have a question, you know, oh, I just wanted to bring something up between, Kind of the different, one of the major differences, even though uh, like Yuriko is in black and white, I don't know if you can, guys can see this, but you've got, you've got this really unique, it's almost like a thumbprint pattern that kind of goes throughout the, you yeah. know, the entire book. And so when you, when you said like with Narita, when you were approaching that in the beginning, you didn't know that that was going to be color. Were you planning on doing something similar to this originally, or were you going to do something different? Like no, so that so so Yuriko was like a sharp left turn for me because I'd been working on the Narita thing for like three or four years. Okay, and... so so Yuriko came afterwards. Yeah, well, I mean, I I was writing it at the same. I was writing the story at the same time, but I didn't have the idea to have a, to draw anything graphic for right. Narita or for Yuriko because it's a it's a novel. Like I have a, a two part like novella written for it that's just prose and i thought oh it'd be cool to do like a companion okay. comic for it or whatever and it was it was great because it was like a it was a break you know so i didn't i wasn't just constantly thinking about mermaids and fairies and fantasy and all that kind of stuff and i was like i need something that's dark and creepy and just totally totally left field so that's why i and so i made those brushes for like the thumbprints and all that kind of stuff um, and I just, you know, dipped my thumb in some ink and on a piece of paper, took photos of it and then imported them into my brushes and tweaked them. And I found that the ones that are the least uh, formed with the edges being the, the most destroyed and kind of weird with all the artifacts and stuff, those ones actually work the best for w my purposes. And I have about like five of them that I made for different things like the light, light shadow fades on their skin versus the backgrounds where it looks like big nasty thumbprints and the train wow. and all the stuff. So I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, I thought this might've been a tech. I didn't realize that this was, this was actually your fit thumbprints and stuff. That is, that is cool that you made those. That's, that's pretty much yeah. what I was just telling Corey. I mean, you, you know, you could probably do the same thing if you took all the time to do that and made those brushes, you could probably sell those brushes as well, but people then you'd have other people doing, you yeah, know, people, 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 people have asked me. People have asked me before, like, "Hey, can you share all those brushes with me?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, why don't yeah. you make your own?" Uh, you yeah. know, I feel kind of strangely. They all work for the FBI. They're like, "Can you share <laughs> yeah. those uh, thumbprints with us?" Well, and I'm I'm about as tech savvy as like uh, a Rottweiler. I don't I don't do I'm not good at figuring out tech at all. Like, I can fix your car. You you need your brakes changed. That's not a problem. I can build a house, no problem. But tech I, stuff, oh my god, it's just this crazy <laughs> nightmare for me. So when people ask me like, how did how did you? And I'm like, dude, I just followed the instructions, like I was changing the oil on a '79 Mercedes, I guess, <laughs> and it worked. And I don't know how, and I can't explain why, but it did. So <laughs> that's cool. Let me that's let awesome. me show you guys this real quick. So this is whoa this is that app, and so I'll go that's in. Like, here's all the different. Here's all the different libraries that I've got and everything. And you can go in and say, you know, you can edit them. And I like to mix in HSB just because all that. And I can go in and I can tap on any of these and kind of mix those and then it'll save them. HSB but is wonderful. I love, I love HSB. But if you what go is to HSB, uh, it's hue, saturation, and brightness. And so oh. if you don't touch the hue, 
then anything that you do on the saturation or the brightness would still fall in with that particular like color. Um, anyway, so it's kind of, it's kind of a cool way to do it. Um, but like, okay. So these are like original, not original, but these are the star Wars, uh, storyboards, storyboards. Right. And so if I wanted to do like the star Wars storyboard here, I could come in and say tap to freeze. And then you can kind of slide and say, well, I want, I want that one. And I've already got like a lighter orange. So I'm going to get like a more rich one. Um, but I also want some of that blue. So I'm going to take this over here and I'll grab that blue. And then when you're done, wow. you can come over here and it gives you that, you know, that kind of uh, swatch and you can save it and everything. And so wow. anyway, it's just, it's a really cool, it's, it's a really cool thing that you can, you can do on anything. And so I just That's grabbed amazing. this on my desk, but you could you could come in and say all right let's get it let's get one of these tap to freeze and you're like okay let's grab you know that and so you kind of you kind of dial in you know what you're looking for so i might want like a more of a brown and then i'd go i'd go save and then i can change this to hsb and i can go in and i can edit each one of these um you know and so i might say oh i want that one to be like a little bit more green and you could like slide it over we're a little bit more or less saturated. And so you can mix that in. Um, and then it'll even give you like, like the color breakdown in the color wheel of that. Uh, and Damn. then if you save that, it'll save the, it'll save the image as well. And then you can save that and it ends up in your, in your Photoshop library. Uh, well, Photoshop and Illustrator and whatever else where the, where the libraries are. Man, so. you, this is a, a pretty serious hack, dude. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought this. I thought more people knew about this, but every time I every I time I bring didn't. it up, every time I bring it up, people are like, "Whoa!" Because I'm just I'm just that weirdo in the store. People are probably thinking that I'm like price price shopping. You know, like they, they're thinking, <laughs> "Oh, he's just checking stuff on Amazon to see if it's." But I'm I'll just <laughs> wander around taking pictures of products and books and stuff, and really, I'm just I'm stealing all of their. Uh, Oh my other god! Color. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, what was that called you, again? Let me hold on. You're stealing all the color palettes, even though you're working almost strictly in black and white now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm so, fun. It's just fun to watch those little goo goos like move around the screen. It's mesmerizing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am so ADD with my with my focus that I'll I'll be back into color in a few months, I'm sure. But uh, what is that yeah, called? Yeah. So I mean, if you if you took like. Um, I've, I've done this a little bit as well, where I'll, I'll take like a book of paintings, you know, like if you're going, Oh, like Renaissance paintings or whatever. And then you would just, you just flip through the pages and, and, and snag all those colors. And you've got masters that are choosing your color palettes for you based off of the app. Yeah. So, What's the app called again, Corey? It's called Adobe capture. So it's just oh, capture. C A P T U R E. Oh, cool. uh, weird little side thing just out of curiosity um what like if you guys had to name like one of your favorite colorists uh who who would you say for like oh, just, ian, ian mckee is pretty good hmm. nice elizabeth brightweiser nice i'm torn between three people <laughs> who, chris ware i think is one of the best colorists oh alive. wow yep um, because he just does flat, but he'll do these weird choices. Um, uh, Tomer Hanuka, which if you guys haven't checked out Tomer Hanuka's stuff, it'll blow your mind. And then Dave Stewart, who's just like the king of minimal color, like Hellboy. Is Dave, is Dave Stewart the one that does all of like Sean Gordon Murphy's colors and stuff? Yeah, he's weird because he's he rose to fame really with hellboy you know because hellboy right. is dave stewart that's like dave stewart doing dave stewart yeah. but he switch gamuts and do this like really floral like crazy beautiful color that's like crazy rendered and then it'll pare down to like these perfect flats and i i think he's a real um yeah real talent because i i like i like him because he doesn't get in the way or overpower the inks yes you know, like, and that's because I, I'm an ink kind of snob. And so like, I like to see the inks and a lot of, you know, if you're doing a lot of color holds or super, super overpowering things, like you can't even see a lot of the, the like nuance in the inks. And so I, I like Dave Stewart a lot for, for that, because I, you know, 
a lot of those mm-hmm. books are they feel black and white even though they're in color and the color adds quite a bit but it, it's not overpowering yeah he'll even go you know they'll be in some like underwater realm or something and it, everything is super dark like dark dark blues and purples and reds right. and stuff like that but it still retains the shape that the the inks are laying out for it you know what i mean it, which yeah, is it, that's that's dangerous territory because you know if you do if you if you color something really dark somebody might be like oh man like can't even see the picture and you're like yeah. well but it's in a cave yeah right it, it's hard to pull off those like really neutral colors you know it's it's hard to yeah. do yeah, I don't yeah. know. From I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know for like graphic design wise, like um, like Tom Whalen. I like his Ooh. stuff. His yeah. color. I mean, his color choices are great. Uh, if more like a softer stuff, like a Mary Blair. Um, Mary Blair's great too. Um, yeah, I know. And when it comes to like comics, I don't know. There's just so many good. I, I don't even know. I don't know a lot of colors in comics names. I just I see a lot of really great. You know color and i'm like oh wow that's brilliant yeah who colored yeah. tale of sand that was the oh artist, right? I think that was i think oh, that was the artist wasn't it wasn't it ramon yeah that yeah that is really good yeah it's, i got that on my bookshelf but story's probably get it quicker but yeah I got that over yeah there's so many great great you know there's a book that my my kid brought home from school when she was in elementary called um book of five the book of five worlds no it's just called five worlds um and it's got a whole gamut of illustrators and i'm not sure how they broke it out like certain illustrators illustrated certain characters and stuff like that the whole thing is seamless but yeah yeah it's very similar to that but it it, it, the the color schemes that they're using within this when they move to a different world or a different vibe the whole color scheme changes yeah and it's all harmonious it's just like amazing yeah the other one that i I pulled examples that's similar to who's the artist on tale of sand uh, that's R- Ramon K. Perez. Okay, uh, one that's similar. I mentioned. I mentioned in some of my videos that are the uh, what was. Is it? Is it to- Tony Cliff? I think he did. The, oh, Tony, Tony Cliff. Cliff did, uh, Dirk, Tony uh, Cliff. Uh, Delilah did. Dirk. Yeah, Delilah Dirk and the Turkish oh. lieutenant. Yeah, his his color is really great. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Tony Clifton, the alter ego. No, of- no. Okay. <laughs> Is he getting? He's get. Corey's got everything there. He, just, <laughs> he does. Yeah. yeah, I've shown that a couple of times on my. Like, I think I showed that showed his stuff off on uh, like making comics one hundred one. Oh, but yeah. I know. Um, the dude, uh, Josh, who's the guy that did Limbo? Remember that comic Limbo I did? On, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I'm blanking out. I know, I know I who you're talking about. That's, that stuff's amazing. Oh, Dave. No, that's the. Uh, I'll, I'll find that one in a minute too. It's almost <laughs> more entertaining to watch him like fumble around in the background. Yeah. Trying to find that. I think we should. Uh, yeah, have a yeah, whole that's episode totally that's Corey, Corey, Corey is seeking books. Yeah, just me pulling books off the shelf. Yeah, that's that's actually the example I pulled out. That one where the campfire. So yeah, yeah, where yeah. you got all that, all that, that blues and purples, night skies, and then that, then that campfire in the center. It just looks great. Let me switch yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Light on this one. Yeah, yeah. I want to highlight yeah. some weird colors in a second too. Yeah, yeah. man, we're we're getting uh, the problem when you're a fan of visual art <laughs> is when you start talking about visual art you like. You know, it's it's like you're opening Pandora's box. Yeah, you go down a bit of a rabbit hole. Okay. Yeah. It's so, weird. So, David, uh, Jim Lujan, our friend, uh, is I think he's trying to see if you guys might be related some way. So he wants sure. to know if you have family in L.A. or Arizona. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, Just sorry. West no. Texas. Yeah. West okay. Texas, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys but, see that? What I just popped on my... On oh, my yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's Tomer. Okay. Well, and like Tomer Hanuka's colors are, I don't know, they blow my mind. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. amazing. You don't, you wouldn't think that would work with that. I mean, it just looks. So he, he's obviously a su- subscriber to the the Fovist school of thought there, uh, post impressionists, where 
you are illustrating the color of the emotion that is being evoked by the character. You're not actually trying to describe the color of that right. person's skin. Yeah, and the thing that'll kill you about Hanuka's so stuff is color? like he oh, always no. goes with those off colors. Yeah. yeah. And who did the coloring uh, on that? This is this is Limbo. I covered this on the indie review show. That is great. Um, but he uses he uses like CMYK like nobody I've ever seen. This is uh uh Winji Garden. Um anyway, his stuff is his stuff is so good, and there's just these bright spots of teal, green, and purple, and anyway, moods changes as he kind of goes through, and nothing is like local color, it's all more emotive color. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I love his I love his stuff. I'll stop. Yeah. I'll stop going to my bookshelf now. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many, so many examples. There's, a, <laughs> yeah, there's so many good examples of their color. Yeah, sorry for the the gushy side tangent where I'm like, let's all geek about the stuff we like colors of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where like you have to draw, you have to draw inspiration from somewhere. I mean, I, I would have never delved into color if I hadn't seen, you know, books that were done in color and been like. Dang, that looks cool, man! I really yeah. want to try and figure that out. You know what I mean? Like how and why? Because it's a it's a it's a far stretch. You know what I mean? But it's the same thing with black and white. You know, you look at a Frank Miller book and you're just like, he's that the perfect harmony and all he's using is big blocks of black and big blocks of white, and they're all yeah. stacked in the perfect way, just enough to describe what's happening to where you really get it, and it all works perfectly. So you know. Yeah, but there are things to to uh, you know aspire to. I was about to grab my uh, my Daredevil uh, art artifact edition of Frank Miller, but it's like, <laughs> it's like huge. Anyway, yeah, it's like photographs so, of the original ink pages. That was so red. Oh wow! So I, I have a question. Uh, this kind of I guess it's kind of moving away a little bit from color, but I, I'm curious. Like, so you're working on. You're you're writing and drawing two two series kind of simultaneously. So how yeah. does how does that all work? How do you divide that up and how do you how do you decide, you know, is it just what do you do one and then switch to the other one and then do the other is it like back and forth as far as the the release date? Because I mean you just released a comic on Kickstarter like about four months ago and now you've got the next one out. And then, yeah. you know, there's already, you know, there's already, a, you know, talking about the second issue of Yuriko. I mean, yeah. in the back here, there's an ad for that. And and it looks like Narita is not a one shot. It looks like it's continuing, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm alternating them so that I can kind of take a mental break yeah. from each character and then I get to come back and revisit it. So I'm That's scripting cool. Yuriko book two right now. Um, and I've already got the like concept and the outline and everything. I just need to like script the actual pages and get them get them a little more honed in. But on top of all that, because I'm crazy, uh, I just finished illustrating a book for a guy named Morgan Quaid. That um, he sent me a script. It's like 23 pages, and he was like, "Work it in whenever you can." I was like, "Let's do it. Let's do it now. I don't have time <laughs> later, so let's make it happen." That was like it was black and white, set in New Orleans. Uh, so I kind of wanted to go halfway grimy with the thumbprint stuff and then halfway kind of ink wash looking things, kind of like Narita uh, with the art style of it. But um, yeah, I don't know. People keep approaching me and saying, hey, do you have time to do a comic? And I stupidly say yes every time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm well, like, you also said that you, you got something going on in an anthology coming up too, didn't you? Yeah. So speaking of color, that was actually the first, that was really the first thing that I colored comic wise it's a little six page thing in the uh, uh apollo city comics podcast is putting out a punk anthology um and it's called a night at the parlor and it's about like this punk rock joint that i used to bartend at for like a decade and that i just chose three colors so the line art was in kind of a darkish purplish red and then i had kind of a mid mid-tone red and then i had a kind of a light faux yellow i guess you could say um so when they go outside of the club i inverted all the colors and there's not a whole lot of red going on and it's like all yellow and bright stuff because on the patio of this place it's lit up you know they've got lights 
you go inside the club and everything turns red and there's a huge bar fight and the only lights are coming from like the keg box and the pinball machine in the corner and stage lights and stuff like that. So it's all just blocks of light happening or blocks of color happening in there to create all this stuff. But I did drop the opacity on, on all of the color layers to see how I could blend them on top of each other to create extra colors, you know, by overlapping them in specific places and stuff like that. But I tried not to get too complex with that. That was super fun. It was like a printmaker's nightmare slash puzzle <laughs> for an old man to solve when he's in his rocking chair kind of situation. But <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked about that one coming out. I think they're going to, that's going to release this spring too. They're going to try and kickstart it. And apparently the book's awesome. It's got like, I don't know, 20 different artists in it or something like that. That sounds pretty cool. amazing. Well, that's cool. You're you're making this up, all, us look bad. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's quite prolific. It's, it's, uh, yeah. So, but it's it's all great stuff. So it's 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 awesome. Well, looking at your looking at you guys' <laughs> websites, I'm like, dang, they have stuff. Like, I have a comic, like a comic. You guys have well, like I don't know if you yeah I think you have pages. two or three uh, comics. <laughs> well, I will soon enough, but as as for right now, <laughs> I'm I'm behind I'm behind the curve. I got to catch up to everybody else because I just got started. So, well, it doesn't look like it. I mean, the stuff. I mean, again, I I you know I I I would urge everyone definitely definitely I'm going to do that myself so I don't so so I don't miss out but um click go to the description and click on that link so you'll be alerted when Narita comes out and I don't can I assume yeah from lesser known comics you can still get Eureka right yeah yeah so Eureka is going to be uh, an add on on the campaign I'm also going to do oh, okay, uh, a cool. couple of... so you can get both there you go yeah yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to do like a sketch cover option too on there so if people want me to draw something onto their book directly they can Add that on there. I've never done that before. It's well, a little bit nerve wracking. On it. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be super messy. It's you know, it's going to be marker on a on a comic book cover. So, yeah. but I'm excited about that. That'll be fun. Oh, well, cool. Is it, so? Is there anything before we start closing things out? Is there anything that anyone wanted to touch on as far as color goes? Oh, we do have a question here. Um, let's see. So, artist Ralph wants to know. When you guys are working in color, do you work in RGB or CMYK? Um, I don't know. For me, a lot of times I'll work in RGB and then convert to CMYK. That's probably not not what you're supposed to do. But I'm, I'm from old school back when that saved a lot of space, even though now it probably doesn't matter because, you know, the computers are a lot faster now. But um, yeah. but I do. I usually I always if I'm working in RGB and if I know it's going to be a print, I always pay attention to the little um, exclamation point. If that pops up, I won't use that color. You know, if it's yeah. alerting you that that's not going to print. So I don't know. What about you guys? CMYK all the way. OK, yeah, I, figured <laughs> <laughs> I work in I work in RGB and then and then it gets converted to CMYK whenever I'm sending it to the to the printer. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, rare, I rarely print anything uh, that is color. So I, I just work in RGB most of the time. Yeah, I, I even I'm though so a lot of times I'll work. Three of you. I, I can do that, <laughs> but even though even there's though I do work, in, us, like I say, there's a power in fours. That's all I'm saying. C M Y K. Yeah, you know, just saying. Well, even though, like I said, I do pay attention. So, but it it gets to the point where. If I'm doing something that's going to be on the web, I, I I find it really hard to use colors that won't print for some reason. Even though like you have a lot you have a lot more choices there, but I I usually shy away from those colors. Which if I know it's specifically for the web, I got to embrace that. So but, yeah, I want to you know. see you do like straight up just like weird colors that can never print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the other thing too is that. Um, if you're printing small amounts of things, you can get away with a lot more um, because CMYK is designed for large print runs that are going to be offset printed in a yeah. lithographic process, right? So you got to have four plates and each one of them is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, right? So those things need to be able to layer on top of each other to create whatever the color is that you're trying to use. Um, but if you're not going to be doing, you know, 100,000 copies of whatever that, DC comic is that's getting shipped worldwide. You don't have to worry about it as much because your print run is probably going to be small enough to where it's going to be digitally printed with yeah. uh, some sort of inkjet printing. You know what I'm True. saying? So, 
Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I guess uh, if there's if, there, if there's no other, you know, nothing else that uh, anyone wants to comment on as far as colors, we can start wrapping things up. Um, uh, I guess I'll start with with Josh. Josh, let us know uh, where they can find your stuff and what you want to promote before we head yes. on out. Uh, so you can find my stuff. Well, I'm going to be lurking on YouTube. I, I keep promising that I'm going to start live streaming again, and I promise I will. Um, but uh, yeah, so make sure you're subscribed to me on YouTube, Joshua Kemble, and then uh, pick up my books, uh, Two Stories, which has a uh, black and white interior with absolutely no color and a one color tone cover done in that classic indie blue. Um, and then... Uh, Jacob's apartment, which is full color graphic novel, uh, slice of life, coming of age story, uh, that plays a lot with color. So yeah, that's, that's my stuff. And, uh, CMYK rules. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a threadless shirt that says CMYK, but it's like YMCA and they're making the CMYK and each, each I love Have you that, seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. All right, Corey. Uh, yeah, you can you can find my stuff at uh, CoreyKerr.com. I will uh, continue to put those on T-shirts. That's kind of my biggest push lately. So if you want to get that stuff, you can go to CoreyKerr.com slash store. And I've got uh, all the different stuff there, all the different things with uh, that. And if you want to jump on and hear uh, video essays on uh different ways that we could enter dystopia um and the art that i make kind of leading into that then you can go to coreycurcom slash email and uh you can see each one of these has a different uh kind of uh, entrance into the end of the society or societal collapse into the world type things and so um you can uh listen to those and then uh bore people at parties that ask about your t-shirt and all that's at how, how is the First Amendment lead into uh, the dystopia? What are you? Are you opening the box? You opened the box. I <laughs> know. I just told you I have all video essays. Uh, I, <laughs> that, that one is uh, probably the suppression. The suppression of that is. Oh, okay. got it. Got it. Uh, if you guys want to know more about that, you should HSB slide over there. No, <laughs> I'm here all night, guys. I'm here all night. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Okay, David, what about you? Right. Let people know about the new comic and, and anything else. Yeah, so uh, I have a, a new comic. This is my visual aid uh, because I don't have a computer to my name, so I can't switch the cool slides. But uh, Narita, it, Narita is, a, uh, is a comic book coming out. It's launching on Tuesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, um, on Kickstarter. Uh, Narita at Narita Comic is like all my social media stuff. You can also pick up my book year ago on the campaign, which is also got no color in it. It's just black and white. Yeah, and thumbprints. Thumbprints galore. So if you want to steal my identity, log <laughs> in my bank account. Do, do you want to do a real quick elevator pitch for both of those books? Uh, Narita is a is a book about it's a fantasy book set in a fantasy world with a mermaid who gets trapped on land, and she has to navigate the land of the 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 realm of the land dwellers and quickly gets caught up in all the tumultuous stuff that happens between people who walk around on legs. Uh, Yuriko is about a Korean vampire at the turn of the century, right at the beginning of the industrial revolution, um, and she lives in Seoul with her adopted daughter and she is being pursued by a, a, a very ill-equipped vampire hunter who learns the ropes really fast how he probably shouldn't mess around with Yuriko. She's a pretty tough vampire. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's me. Yeah. Nice. Great. And definitely follow, follow the stuff uh, or like click on the thing in the description and uh, be alerted when the Kickstarter goes live. Um, Cause it's just, it's great stuff. So, um, so I will do that myself. Uh, yeah, as far Roy as... G Biv your way over there. All right, Scott, <laughs> I'm trying to keep the color theme here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find me here on this channel where you will also find making comics 101. That is my series on how to make comics. 
is the most comprehensive course for free you will find anywhere on how to make comics. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's like over, I think it's close to 70 videos long. You don't have to watch all of them. You can kind of skip around if there's any disciplines you want. Like if you want to learn about inking or whatever, the way it's structured is there's a main, there's a main video that kind of covers that. Um, and then there's like a quick tip video that goes with that. And then there's sort of a deep dive video that goes a little more into each one of those topics. So, um, check it out if you want to learn how to make comics. Um, and then, uh, you can find, uh, you can find my comic at my website at circworks.com. I've got five issues of my series, Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie adventure story. Just think Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. It's 80s action with kids fighting zombies so um you can find that on my website uh as well as a bunch of other art prints and things like that that you can find over there and my digital products are also there so just tons of stuff over there um so yeah i wanted to thank everyone in the chat thanks for chiming in and i want to thank david for coming back on and 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 kind of discussing uh color this was a great conversation so um yeah. So yeah, I guess we will, oh, I forgot <laughs> the mailing list. So the, the art casters, we do this show every single week and uh, usually it's on Thursday nights, but that could change. It also rotates between my channel and Josh's channel and Corey's channel. So that can get confusing for you guys to figure out whose channels can be on and what week. If you don't want to be confused, just join our mailing list. There's a link in the description of this video. Um, and we don't spam you or anything. All we do is about 30 minutes or so before we go live, we'll let you know who the guest is going to be whose channel it's going to be on and, uh, you know, and obviously the day and everything. So click on that, sign up for that. And you'll know exactly when we go live because YouTube doesn't always notify people. So definitely do that. And we will see you on, I think Josh's channel. I think I forgot. We'll find out. Josh's. And if, and, and you'll know, because if you join that mail list, you'll know where the show's going to be. So again, check that out, but we'll see you guys next week. Later. All right. See Thanks you. Bye guys.